So for those of you who have never run for office before and are considering it, I'll let you in on a little secret. Raising money sucks. <laughs> Few people enjoy being locked in a room, um, phone calling family members, friends, and complete strangers and asking them for money. And to make matters worse, you're expected to do that 20 hours a week. Let me just repeat that. 20 hours a week. You know, raising money is a cruel necessity of politics, and that's why I've often said that my favorite endorsement was from End Citizens United, because I desperately wanted to get money out of politics. So once you develop your message and you start to raise money, then you need your machine. A data-driven operation that targets potential voters, persuades them to vote for you, and then gets their butts to the polls. Our target on election day was 52% of the vote. And because of our money, message, and our 125-person field and canvassing machine, we earned 51.5% of the vote. You know, it wasn't easy. We faced all kinds of obstacles, particularly from my opponent and his allies, and even from some within my own party who belittled my experiences, who said I wasn't qualified, that I had bit off more than I could chew, and that I was being propped up by others because they couldn't possibly imagine that I had the experience or the skills to be calling the shots. But what they didn't know was that as a young woman of color who had worked at the Pentagon and in corporate boardrooms, I was used to people looking at me and underestimating my qualifications and my potential. <laughs> and when I was faced with those situations then, and when I'm faced with them today, I just do what I've always done, and that's to kill them with confidence. And that's exactly what we did. And you know, I didn't do this all by myself. I had support from my party, my, my team of consultants, my donors, and I had a talented and hardworking staff that, that I had hired to help me get the job done. And I had a committed, relentless team of volunteers and canvassers who embraced our campaign for change, equality, and security, and who worked their hearts out. And that brings us to today where I stand before you as a refugee, a proud American citizen, a young Vietnamese American woman, and the next Congresswoman from Central Florida. But this would have never happened had I let this opportunity pass me earlier this summer. Had I not, never, had I not entered the arena despite the long odds of winning. As most of you know, the inspiration and name of the summit is from a famous 1910 Teddy Roosevelt speech about what citizenship means. That the credit of a great nation belongs to the people who enter the arena, who strive valiantly despite the risk of failure. And to fully understand the meaning of what Teddy Roosevelt said, it's important you hear the full context of that quote. Because what Teddy said in 1910 still rings true today, though I'm taking the liberty of replacing man in his quote with person, because a few things have changed since 1910. <laughs> the full quote reads, it's not the critic who counts, not the person who points out how the strong person stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Now there's a lot packed into this one paragraph from a speech that's arguably Teddy Roosevelt's most famous speech. And for those who know their history well, this speech on citizenship was made all the more powerful because Teddy Roosevelt was just that, a citizen. 
While he left the presidency a year earlier, Teddy never left the arena of active citizenship. And from this one quote, I believe there are a, a, three lessons from President Roosevelt. Lesson number one, haters are gonna hate. <laughs> and trust me, when you enter politics, there will be a lot of haters. Even Teddy Roosevelt had his share of haters back in the day. In fact, Teddy Roosevelt's own party was so determined to relegate him to oblivion that they made him vice president. <laughs> Little did they know that an assassin's bullet by an anarchist, no, no, nonetheless, would propel Roosevelt to the presidency and would later allow him to dramatically expand the powers in the bully pulpit of the presidency. Today's haters are found everywhere, from social media to the main, mainstream media. And I should know, I had commentators demean my entire professional career. In fact, one even called me a nothing burger whatever that means. <laughs> but that made me even more determined to prove them wrong. And prove them wrong, we did. Lesson number two, the credit is in getting involved, not winning. Don't get me wrong, winning is great. But if you can raise awareness about the issue or issues you care about, if you can advance the conversation and move the ball even just one yard, then you've accomplished more than most. Never feel like you're powerless to make a difference. We all have our own unique strengths and opportunities to shape the world around us. It's up to us to determine how and when we utilize them. And always remember what Teddy Roosevelt once said. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing that you can do is nothing. Finally, lesson number three. Don't just strive, strive valiantly and spend yourself in a worthy cause. But to do this, you have to stay true to yourself, your values and your principles. And if you haven't had a serious conversation with yourself about what your values, priorities, and principles are, then take some me time and figure them out. Politics is full of tough decisions in gray areas and public opinion that can change in a second. And for those of you who may run for office, my advice is to never lose sight of why you're running and always trust your gut. The minute you get into a race, your party, your donors, your consultants, your staff, and complete strangers will all try, try to tell you what to do. There's incredible pressure to say this or do that from all kinds of outside forces. But at the end of the day, it's your name on the ballot and your reputation at stake. After the election, your team's gonna move on to the next campaign, but you will forever live with the type of campaign you ran. So make it one that is valiant, of worth, and one of which you can be proud. Over the next two years, I pledged to hold true to my values to be a strong bipartisan leader in Congress who works with both Democrats and Republicans to get meaningful results for Central Florida families and for Americans across this great nation. I want to ensure everyone in my district feels like they're being heard and that they have someone fighting for them in Congress. And I hope you'll do your part. I hope you'll stay in the arena. I hope that when you're marred by dust and sweat and blood, that you will continue to strive, and that you will come to know great enthusiasms, great devotions, and that you will spend yourself into a worthy cause. And remember, you will probably face defeat. In a democracy, our campaigns or our candidates don't always win. But we should never stop working our hearts out to elect candidates we believe in and the fight to move our nation forward never ends despite our disappointments along the way. So in closing, I hope you celebrate when you're victorious and that when you fail, you fail while daring greatly. Oh, and I hear speaking softly and carrying a big stick works too. <laughs> so thank you for having me speak here tonight. Good luck and Godspeed. Thank you.